This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Vahida Prakash Kalaskar, principal of Paradise English Medium School and Junior College from Zadho's Group of Institute, welcome you for our webinar on COVID preventive measures and first aid. For this, our today's guest, Dr. Sudhir Rai, sir, who is the COO of Ruby Hall Clinic, he is with us. I welcome you, sir. We welcome you, sir. We request you. Yes, sir. We request you to please proceed further with our program, sir. We are thanking you for being with us, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, the entire team of Jadavar and uh, students and teachers. Thank you for having me at this forum. Uh, let us start our talk today. It's basically on first aid measures, which most of you would have known and you've been doing this, but this is a brief update on how the entire thing can be taken forward. Well, let's see a small video on what normally happens. So here we have seen how somebody meets with an accident. Basically, it's important that you wear a helmet, you wear seat belts, and you do not do drink and drive. So saying this, anyway, we need to understand what do we do. So first aid is something which is very immediate care, and it makes a difference between one's life and death, and it's always temporary. So understanding first aid is what we are going to do today. It's very important in emergency that the speed with which they get their help and what kind of quality of medical care that is given to them in the first one hour, that is the golden hour, that makes a huge difference in the life and the death of the person who is receiving this first aid. Whenever there is an accident, it's very important that first we approach the person without causing harm to yourself. That's make sure that there is nothing that is going on that can cause a blast or there is a oncoming traffic and you are trying to go in the wrong side to help them. So be careful when you approach a person. It's very important that you also have the ambulance numbers in your locality or at least 
108 as a standard number in your cell phone to call whenever there's a need for help. The number that we display is for Hinjewadi and around. So you can do your bit by helping them locating where the person is from, his phone number, if possible, he's awake and uh, sound, you can at least call his relatives to get the help as you take him to the nearest hospital. It's important that you do not directly jump into the situation to help. Having done these two things, whenever you approach a person, there are a few basic steps that we always tell how to assess a person. To remember this, it is C-A-B, that's CAP. We have already learned alphabets as A-B-C. There's a slight change here where we say C-A-B. That is checking the circulation. Circulation basically means checking the heart and the blood circulation in the body. A is opening the airway and B is breathing. Here in this diagram, just adjacent, we see that this is the position. Basically, the Adam's apple, you go one and a half centimeters to the side where you are sitting and put your two fingers so that you can press and check the pulse. Having checked pulse, if you are able to check, uh, feel the pulse, then you open the airway. That is from C, we go to A. To open the airway, we need to do a small maneuver, two fingers under the chin and palm over the forehead and slowly move the head upwards. Having done this, the person airway, the breathing from the nose and the tongue fall is prevented and we can go very close to him and check if he is breathing. To check breathing, we should look if there is a chest rise. We should see if he can uh, you know, see the chest rise, we should feel okay, and we should uh, feel the air that is coming from the uh, nostril. And we also try to see done this, we go for the bleeding part because he is breathing, his circulation is okay. We have asked him, is he okay? And we see if there is any bleeding or if there is any back pain or neck pain. Having done this, we if he is awake, he is not having much of pain, he is bleeding or uh, there is nothing much of thing. You can always call for the ambulance which would come and you can take him to the side. If there is a problem, the person is not responding, we might go ahead for doing cardiac compression. Now, cardiac compression is a training, so you should be careful. We at OB Hall Clinic also enroll people for local people who can come up and learn these things and it is done at specific time period. Having done this, we'll just show you a video how a basic support or a help can be provided, including a cardiac massage. This video is by American Heart Association. It shows you how the basic support can be given when a person collapses. really good about the race this weekend. I've gotten my time down, and it looks like the weather's going to be good. Yeah, it's supposed to be beautiful on Saturday, and you've been running really well. You've actually been pushing me. <laughs> if I do well this weekend, I'm actually thinking about starting to train for the marathon. Hey, come in for that. I've always wanted to train for a marathon, but I didn't want to put in all the work by myself. Besides, it'd be great to have a buddy to train with. <laughs> by the way, how's work going? All that bad, huh? Kelly! Kelly! Kelly, what's wrong? Are you okay? Kelly! Somebody help! Every 90 seconds, another person dies from sudden cardiac arrest. But thanks to the quick actions of people like you, dedicated to learning how to save a life, Kelly will live to run again. Everybody step back, please. Stay safe. We can take it from here, sir. Well, you guys got quick. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Are you okay? He's not responding. He's not breathing normally, just gasping. Grab the AED.
There's no pulse. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, it was hard and fast. Nine, At least two inches or five centimeters. His chest needs to completely recoil after each compression. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Analyze. Everybody clear? Do not touch the patient. Let's switch now. Shock needed. Charging. Stay clear. AD says shock advised. Everybody clear? Flashing button now. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. One, two, Start three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 21, 22, Analyze 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Let's switch again. Shock needed. Stay clear of the patient. Charging. Press the Everybody clear. Now. Shock delivered. So it is 30 compressions to breath. exactly what to do. Eddie said that they were there within minutes and they performed like a well-oiled machine. So having understood that it is possible to revive a person after doing CPR, it's very important that if you are still waiting for an ambulance, you need to know how to put a person in a safe position. Lying down supine, the person can have his tongue fall again and you cannot maintain this opening the airway so well for a long time. In such situation, we put him into a recovery position. The recovery position is you sit at one side, you take the other hand, bring it under the chin and bend the By this, the mouth is on the opposite side, even if he vomits, which is a commonest thing that happens, they, he will break out the vomitus and he will not rebreathe it because the hand will prevent it from coming back on his nose. The leg will prevent him totally going flat and he would stay on a lateral side. This recovery position knowing is very important after you have done a first aid is showing the signs of breathing and his circulation is okay till you help. Let's understand various scenarios how you can rescue a person in first aid. Suppose somebody is fallen in water and you do not know how to swim. You use a pole or a long stick to uh, towards the victim and pull him up. If you are not able to get a stick and you have a float, you can throw it towards the victim and you can see that he can come back, you can pull it back to the shore. If you are in a boat and if you have the victim in water, please do not bring the boat directly to the victim. You are supposed to give your row of the boat and bring, uh, pick him out of water after he is not breathless bring him towards the boat and you sit on the opposite side of the boat where he is climbing on the boat. Be very careful if you are not knowing to swim, there's a chance that the boat will tilt over. So be very, very extremely careful when you do this maneuver. If you are a swimmer, you can definitely go down and help the victim, but it is seen that swimmers often approach the victim from front, endangering their own health. 
a person should be approached from the back pulled by his hair up of the water till he rebreathes and hold him by his neck and swim with a single hand and two legs swim to the shore it's very important that a swimmer is careful in approaching the victim or he can himself be drowning along with the victim which is seen in many of the cases Having done the water rescue, the other scenario is electrical shock. It is found that there are around 12% of people who get electric shock in a year and they are not properly managed. The simplest way of managing an electric shock is not approaching the victim without seeing the environment because shock is because of one way of entry and the other way of going out. So there is always something that is looping of the connect from the electrical point to the ground. In such situation, we should make sure that if it is possible to turn off the mains immediately as fast as possible, so the, the electrical uh, current is stopped immediately. Or else you can also, if possible, have a dry wood beat off the connectivity point of finger and the live wire so that they do not uh, continue the circulation and the person victim is free from the shock for and away for you to approach him and give the necessary life support that we showed just now. Post water and electrical, the next uh, whatever we see is always a motor vehicle accident. We have seen many motor vehicle accidents, but we are afraid because of the police involvement in most of the cases. Please be rest assured that whenever there is a first responder and he takes it to the hospital, it is not mandate for the person who is giving the help to stay back. You can take him to the hospital with the relations number handed over, your name and number handed over, you can go back to your work absolutely without any hassle. There is a Supreme Court verdict that you cannot be even called to the uh, police station for giving your statement. It is mandatory for the police to come to your house or wherever you call in for giving a statement. You can always give what has happened in the details and be clear of because even in court, you will not be hassled for being a supporter of helping a victim from getting a medical help. So we should make it mandate that whenever we see an accident, we do help a victim so that they survive. Most of the motor vehicle accident, there's a delayed rescue that causes the person to have death. Whenever that's possible, keep calling 108 or the nearest ambulance which is there to that place so that they can get quick response. If you are trying to get out a person from the place of accident, please make sure that you hold his head appropriately and he is not just lifted by hand and leg. Because in most of the accident, neck is the area where the fracture occurs and the person is also often alive with not able to move both his hand and leg beyond his neck. This is a very pitiable, um, which is a very pitiable thing for a patient after he survives. So it is our role to hold the person by neck and head and see that his head doesn't fall back and he is taken care of appropriately. If the engine is on, the first and the foremost thing should be to switch off the engine. If there is a fire, please do not approach the vehicle unless there is some fire safety around because there is a very high chance of explosion. Please try to see if the victim is unconscious that you make the seat go flat and you do not move the victim if the engine can be switched off. Motor vehicle accidents make around 15% of the deaths in the country. That's why it makes a major impact on the so health services. It is very important that the first responder really does a lot of help in such situation to bring down this percentile down. Having understood this, there is something called painting where a person feels giddy, he is restless, he feels weak, 
and as soon as he sits down he is again back to consciousness and he is able to tell that he is okay we have seen many a times people fall down suddenly and then they say i don't know what happened and they are sweating in such situation do not allow them to stand up immediately let them lie down put your two pillows under the leg or you bend down and raise his foot over your thighs for 5 minutes see that he gets a good volume pulse his sweating has released and then you make him to sit up also try to find out if he has had any kind of fall injuries that is hit on the head or bump on the head then we do the a b c h and s that we learned in the first two slides be careful in handling these people though they tell you they are okay there are times where we have found people lose their consciousness immediately after some time so once they are okay there is no sweating pulse is okay they feel they are fine you can make them sit up and give some glucose and water to drink if there is no vomiting managing fainting is the most easiest thing and many people really do well there are times where you see people are having severe asthmatic attack or they out of stress start breathing very rampantly if it is because of stress you can give them a paper bag and ask them to put it around their nose and mouth and keep breathing inside it as they keep breathing inside it the carbon dioxide level will increase and will stimulate the brain to decrease the stress and their breathing will get back to normal a person who is asthmatic will have cough severe blue skin and a sound of cooing which is called wheeze in such patients if they have pump please help them to get their pumps and they can take puffs of their inhaler that would improve their breathing and you can call up the nearest ambulance to go take them to the nearest hospital this is the only first aid which you can give for an asthmatic fits it's very important that you understand fits because many people whenever they are see a fit they definitely try to put some iron keys in the hand they start rubbing the legs they start uh, giving uh, sprinkling water on the uh, uh, the victim they try to cut an onion or a chippel to breathe under the nose please understand fits is a electrical circuit disturbance in the brain it under no circumstances will have any impact but choose or a bad smelling sock to wake them up it is a self limiting disorder that means that after some particular time a person who is having fits will stop fitting in such condition we need to help them how do we help them we make a roll of their of a handkerchief and try to push it from the sides of the mouth and not in front so that it doesn't bite your finger and try to prevent a tongue bite if you are not able to do that it's okay just hold him and put him into recovery position which we recently saw that is one on the side with the hand under the chin if the hand is also fitting you have to just keep your palm under the face and roll him to one side because as soon as he is awake he there is a chance that he will vomit so in such condition the recovery position will really help it takes around 5 minutes for him to recover so whatever people are around please make them to go away at a distance and allow this patient to get fresh air to breathe in the due time please call the ambulance this is the only first aid that is for a person with fits have patience have the confidence people around will order a lot of things for you but in 5 to 10 minutes it will automatically stop by the time the ambulance has come in there are times where people have seizures within 5 minutes they sit up they feel okay they will have mild headache and vomiting sensation they are ready to walk and they can be taken to the nearest hospital managing fit is a very important thing because if you do not handle it properly you can cause problem and 
the patient can be lost just because we have blocked his airway or there is water that goes into his nose any bite or sting whether it is a snake bite or it's any insect bite we have to make sure that there we see the site we definitely need to see a puncture wound if it is from a honey bee we need to remove the honey bee sting if it is from any snake bite we do not cut or we do not do anything we just simply wash the wound wherever there is a single bone mind you single bone is above the knee joint and if it is in the hand it's in the upper arm we can tie a tourniquet immobilize the leg or hand and take them to the nearest hospital because by the time you reach a hospital if the venom uh, is uh, prevented to from going up by the tourniquet slowly the doctor can give a local anti venom and iv venom and anti venom in the iv intravenous line and they would improve faster as you are traveling him to the hospital you can always wash it with water clean water and soap and dress that wound by just keeping a small bandage over it and take him to the nearest hospital please do not use ice packs or cut the wound to make it bleed or do any mouth suction because it is dangerous for you and the victim both managing bite and sting is very important because most of the time the snake bites which many people fear is because of a non poisonous snake if you can if people have killed the snake please carry the snake to the hospital so that doctors can identify the snake and treatment can be more particular a uh, tablet with normal regular water one full wrist of uh, full fist of salt mix in and give it to the person and make him vomit this is the best help you can give for a person who's taken tablet or any medicine as a poison intake if it is petroleum product like kerosene petrol or turpentine it turns make the moment because these substances are highly volatile it can go to their cause pneumonia in such situations you will not do it the other situation where you will not make a person moment is a person who has taken strong acid or alkali that is the uh, things which is used for cleaning the toilet in such situation the acid or alkali can cause fall passages because of digesting the proteins or the passage of the food pipe in such situation also you are not supposed to give them salt water you are supposed to take them to the hospital this first aid for water salt water consumption and vomiting is extremely safe in case of any medicine or liquid medicine intakes any type of bleeding it is very simple first aid that we are supposed to do we are supposed to keep a clean gauze or a cloth and press and hold it for 5 minutes please understand it's watch time of 5 minutes we tend to get very nervous and we tend to remove it again and again we are not supposed to do it whenever there is a bleed do not remove the uh, compression till the watch time of 5 minutes by doing the, this any kind of bleed will stop it's very important for us to hold and press any bleeding site for any uh, improvement that we need it to happen once the bleeding has stopped you can always clean it with antiseptic or soap and water and dress it up that is enough if it is filled with lot of mud or iron uh, rusted iron metal then you can take them to the hospital for tetanus toxicity and antibiotic need otherwise a clean wound by knife or any home utensils can be taken off by just dressing them up burns is another important thing that we see most of our time at home whether it is lady cooking or some kid putting hand into hot water or there is a fire we try to stop it and there is 
burns in our hand. In such situation, pouring slow water, it's in the lower picture, pouring slow water of the burn area, it is what helps 99% of the time. Do not put coffee powder or any other emollient on the thing because when you put that, it holds the heat underneath that, causing the burn to go very high. There are three degrees of burn. The first degree is simply reddening. Second degree is reddening with small bubbles. And third degree is there is a central peeling of skin along with the redness and bubbles that is seen. A second and third degree burn should be taken to the hospital, very uh, covered with a clean plastic bag as we see around, or at least with a clean cloth, a handkerchief covered and taken to the hospital. Do not put any ghee emollient over the thing because in second and third degree burns, we have now something called artificial skin, which can be applied but if these emollients stay, it becomes very difficult to clean and these also become a source for in, uh, infection. In such condition, just cold water flowing over the part is important and they're taken to the hospital. In first degree burn, you can always apply silver X, silver EX, silver X ointment, which gives a wonderful soothing uh, uh, support which you can keep them at home and apply it on the skin. Silver X is a very nice, soothing, cold-like uh, feeling agent, which will help healing the wound also and prevent any further infection. Any burns, thermal, chemical, or electrical can be treated in this format. Heart attack is also a common thing that we see nowadays where many of them start having heart uh, chest pain, uncomfortable squeezing sensation in the chest that radiates to the hand and shoulder, and they suddenly faint or have excessive sweating. Man, you have seen in the video before, whenever there is sudden fall, we check pulse. If there is no pulse, we call for help and do cardiac pressing in the center of the chest, 30 compression. And if you are not able to give breath, no problem and uh, just count one to five and again redo the compression. Keep doing this compression continuously till the help arrives. If a person is complaining of chest pain and you feel it's a cardiac pain, you can have two tablets of Dispirin, which you can dissolve in water and you can give it to the person. In uh, It dissolves immediately and give it to the person to drink progress in the heart where it is already formed. You can also use a of sorbitate under the tongue. It will help the pressure or the squeezing pain that they are having. Do not give more than one sorbitate and two discipline to the person. Take him to the nearest hospital to be evaluated. Managing heart attack is easy. Do not make the person walk as wheelchair or call for an ambulance and minimal movement is diabetic emergencies many times we see that people are worried that a person who is diabetic has low sugar it is very easy to manage all you have to do is give them chocolate or sugar now the question is how do i know whether the person is having low sugar or high sugar the complaints of a person who has low sugar or high sugar is always the same. They will have giddiness, they will have, a, they will have aggressive behavior, they will feel sweaty, they will have painting episode, they will feel hungry. But please remember, low sugar is dangerous than having high sugar. Low sugar can cause convulsion and death. High sugar can be managed in the hospital insulin to bring down the sugar in such cases whenever there is doubt please give them sugar and take them increase thirst dryness and breath smell of acetone can also means acetone means it's like a sweet fruity smell 
can be because of taking the risk of defining it as high so that we give them sugar and take the hospital managing diabetes is easy but it has to be under professional guidance any penetrating to injury to the eye it's the old grandma way of washing it with water or blowing a slow air to the eye and checking for any foreign body if there is a body taking them to the hospital because if things cannot get clean by normal flow of water and by blow of air that needs to be removed removing can be dangerous you should not try anything uh, with the home equipment there are special pluckers to remove these things and corneal damage can be prevented managing it with an ophthalmologist becomes important if there is any redness of eye they should be immediately shown to an ophthalmologist any nose bleed or bleed in the teeth you have to pinch and hold for 5 minutes a watch time of 5 minutes or just put a cotton as we see here under the area where there is bleeding and take them to the hospital the bleeding will stop in 5 minutes but they need to be evaluated if it is a teeth falling period and there has been a fall of teeth you can always press and hold it with the cotton once the bleeding stop you can ask them not to eat or gargle for another 30 minutes the wound would heal on its own any fracture is very painful in such condition taking it as a single unit is important so supporting it with some wooden support or with two pillows and strapping them up if it or supporting it with a pouch and taking them to the hospital becomes a very important thing you can hold uh, roll newspapers and also use it to stabilize the fractured portion or wait for the ambulance to come and they would have splints to apply and take them to the nearest hospital any victim who has fallen and unconscious and you need if there is a big fire and you need to take the person out all you need to go behind the victim pick them up and go under their arms and hold their hands in the opposite direction lift them and move backwards whenever there is an accident if you have to roll a person on a stretcher we just don't pull them we hold them as a single log where one person holds the shoulder and the hip other person holds the hip and the leg and minimum three people where the final person is holding the neck and the head the person who is holding the neck and head will count to the count of 1 2 and 3 and that is when the rest of them will roll him, the person to one side please make sure that the movement is pre decided and synchronized as 1 2 and 3 having told about first aid where we have spoken about what the best you can do and help in moving a patient to a nearest hospital understanding the ambulance number i thank you for hearing and understanding this you are welcome to uh, approach your teachers to come to us for these training programs we can do this now the most important thing have we have today is about omicron we all know that covid has been there in the community since 2019 it was first seen in 2019 november and gradually it has become a major pandemic where many lives were lost the first alpha omicron covid 19 and second delta covid 19 and the third wave that we have seen today is omicron variant omicron is the latest variant of covid 19 it is a mutation of the pre existing delta where the rna of the virus has changed it was first discovered in south africa and now it is spread almost more than 75 countries 
travelers in initially were those from south africa and were being screened but many of them were inefficiently diagnosed or were inefficiently screened leading to be uh, detecting a first case of omicron in bangalore and seven cases reported in pibri chinchwad and gradually it has spread now all over in many states the researchers in south africa around the world conducting studies have understood many aspects of omicron and they have been constantly sharing their report it has been found that it is highly transmissible from one person to another much more than delta variant of covid but the symptoms which has been seen are much lesser as compared to what we saw in delta variant of covid that has given us the study has helped us in understanding that the home care is also one of the good outcome of uh, getting in, infected with covid but manageable at home severity of the disease being lesser it has been a boon where medications being given orally and taken care proper rehydration at home often brings elderly and young individuals improving very fast in 5 to 7 days from the mild disease those people who continue to have more than 3 days fever or having symptoms beyond 3 days are requested to go to the hospital and show to the doctor effectiveness of vaccination or previous infection is a big question what vaccination has majorly failed is prevention of progression or propagation or transmission of the covid virus but it is definitely winding down the symptoms of the omicron variant that is what is definitely seen people do have fever for two days the third day the fever comes down there can be mild weakness or cough that goes on for another 3 to 4 days but they completely are showing reversal and recovery in 7 to 8 days mind you the virus transmission doesn't stop in 7 days if there is a hospitalization requirement we tell them to spend another one week comfortably at home within the family so that they are not spreading it out in the community dead viruses are still seen on the 14th day so a test redone on the 14th day also might come positive you are not to test it after 7 days to find out whether you are negative a proper recovery of 14 days is the best help can that can be done to recover from covid omicron variant those people who have severe reaction where we see few blood test like ldh d dimer il6 going high in such people mild doses of corticosteroids are also given for 2 to 3 days and they recover well please do not interpret all the uh, medications that is required from google because the medication by doctor is based on the clinical findings that we have on the patient to patient basis it is never the same even if you feel that the prescriptions are common there is a lot of variation that is done on person to person please go to a medical practitioners and take your prescriptions and recover well prevention is by maintaining distance suppose they in a house if somebody is found to be infected please provide them a single room and if possible to have a separate bathroom so that they do not mix up give them adequate rest and if you have to approach them wear mask and hand cleaning with sanitization every time you enter that room and come out will prevent the rest of the family from being infected wearing mask and opening the windows of the area of that room so that there is very good ventilation would kill most of the virus avoid crowded places hand washing many times and following vaccination schedules will definitely help you all in having less symptoms and recovering well 
having told this all for you i really hope all of you have understood this first aid program well and would have any inquiries can please write back to your principal who would communicate to me in mail and i would write back to all your responses thank you once again for having me as part of your uh, this first aid program i hand over to mrs vaida to take it forward thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much i really appreciate the way you have given the explanation about the supreme court judgment sir this was really needed because it's a awareness which we are going to create among all the uh, you know society all the people most of the time what happens sir i myself observed raste pe agar koi bhi hai to wo hum dikkat karte hai ki hum isse kyun le jaye क्योंकि कहाँ झंझटों में पड़ेंगे यार कहाँ वहां पे फॉर्मेलिटीज पूरी करेंगे वी ऑल विल गेट स्टक इन दिस सो मेजरली व्हाट हैपन मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल डाई बिकॉज ऑफ नॉट गेटिंग द फर्स्ट एड ऑन अ टाइम मेजरली डाई बिकॉज ऑफ नॉट गेटिंग द हेल्प ऑन टाइमली बेसिस सो ये जो एक Uh, ये कहते हैं ना सोसाइटी में एक जो रॉन्ग uh, इंटरप्रिटेशन है कि हम चक्करों में आ जाएंगे हम इन्हें ले जाएंगे पहुंचाएंगे डॉक्टर्स काफी फॉर्मेलिटीज करेंगे एंड द पुलिस विल कॉल एंड द द थिंग्स विल कीप ऑन एक्सपांडिंग आई विल लूज माय जॉब और समथिंग समथिंग यू नो यू नो सो मेनी थिंग्स आर देयर इन द माइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन बिफोर टेकिंग तो ये पॉइंट द वन व्हिच यू सेड इज लाइक द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज गिवन दिस ऑर्डर एंड इट्स अ सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट दिस पॉइंट आई रियली वांट टू वांट टू गेट हाइलाइटेड Here is that when Supreme Court has given this judgment, that nobody is supposed to wait over there. You just fill your formality of sending your name, your contact number, and that's it. If any inquiry is needed, you know absolutely right. The police will come to you, and they will talk to you. And in all the full support, they will talk to you. They will not trouble you why you have brought that patient at that particular place. So this is a very uh, nice thing which. you have given apart from that all i heard about the life support which was really informative and the three videos which you are shown with the positions of a b c h and s absolutely it's needed it's a very a beautiful guideline and you know very valuable and informative things which you have covered in all the uh, complete webinar program i'm really thankful on behalf of the entire zadwas team we are thankful to you for your precious valuable time and your information for the entire society sir thank you thank you once again thank you so much thank you so much it was my pleasure thank you thank you sir thank you rakhi ma over to you yes thank you so much sir for sharing such valuable information with us and definitely it is going to helpful for everyone really from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of jadhav group of institute i would like to thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much